The Elder Scrolls spans thousands upon thousands of years. 4,450 years of recorded history, but the thing is, there are thousands of years that span beforehand in the Dawn and Merethic eras. Welcome back to Fudge Muppet, my name is Scott, and today I present you Before Elves and Men. What was ancient Tamriel like? What races and civilizations thrived prior to their arrivals? Well, let's dive right in and rediscover a primordial Tamriel. In the Merethic era, we do have some approximate dates marking the amount of years before the first era begins, when recorded history begins. 2,500 years before the start of the first era, Adamantia, the Adamantine Tower, or later known as the Dureni Tower, is constructed on the Isle of Balfiera in the Iliac Bay, created by the gods during the convention where they discussed Mundus and devised Lorcan's punishment. It seems that this marks the earliest point in the Merethic era, and this would give us an approximate length of 2,500 years for the era. Another somewhat accurate date we have in the Merethic era is the arrival of men in what is called the Late Merethic Era. According to the book Frontier Conquest from the University of Gwilym Press, archaeological excavations date the earliest human settlements around 800 to 1000 years before the First Era, predating Isgrimor's arrival by centuries, which itself is estimated some 500 years before the First Era begins. Before this, we know that the elves arrived in Tamriel, traveling from the now lost land of Aldmeris in a period called the Middle Merethic Era. But we have no concrete dates for their arrival, only that it is between 2,500 and 1,000 years prior to the First Era. So in my best estimate, I would probably say that within that 1,500 year period, a thousand of them were probably spent with elven presence, placing elves' arrival at around 2,000 years before the first era begins. Perhaps this period could be shorter, maybe even five to eight hundred years on Tamriel before humans, but the reason I guess that there is around 1,000 years of elven-only occupation is due to the amount of history that takes place here. The Oldma arrive, the Crystal Tower is built, Topol the pilot charts Tamriel, the Bosma presumably diverge in Valenwood, the Aelids go to Cyrodiil and create the White Gold Tower, the Dwemer expand across Tamriel, presumably the Falmer as well, Trunamac is trans transformed into Malakath, hence his elven followers are turned into orcs, and the Kaima follow the prophet Veloth into Resdane where High Velothi culture begins, but then this culture degenerates into tribal cultures which then have to evolve into the great houses of Morrowind. I feel like 1000 years is an appropriate amount of time for all of this to happen, especially considering that the elves are long lived, and that period could be just three elven lifespans. Regardless to me, what this leaves us with is approximately 500-ish, maybe up to 700 years of Tamriel with zero elven settlement and zero men. In this time, what intelligent or somewhat intelligent races exist? What civilizations live in this land of Dawn's beauty? Much of what we know about Tamriel in its earliest possible stages before elves or men come from journals written when Topol the pilot, the Aldmeri explorer, set forth and mapped the land of Tamriel through exploration. Fragments of this ancient expedition preserved in the book Father of the Nibbon provide valuable insight into what Tamriel was like before elves or men. At first, Topol sailed up the western coast of Tamriel and encountered what he called orcs in the land we now know as High Rock, which seems implausible, but this is what the author has to say about it. The question, of course, is what is to be made of this apparent reference to orcs occupying the region. Tradition has it that the orcs were not born until after the Oldma had settled the mainland, that they sprung up as a distinct race following the famous battle between Trinimac and Boethia at the time of Resdane. It is possible that the tradition is wrong. Perhaps the orcs were an aboriginal tribe predating the Aldmeri colonization. Perhaps they were a cursed folk. Orsma in the Altmeris, the same word for orc of a different kind, whose name was given to the orcs in a different era. It is regrettable that the fragment ends here, for more clues to the truth are undoubtedly lost. 
It is a strange mystery, but I could offer here my own theory. At this point in Tamriel's history, it would seem very possible that goblin ken, that is goblins, reeklings, ogres and such, were quite widespread, unchallenged by the elves and men of contemporary Tamriel. I believe that these orcs that Topol encountered were in fact goblins. Goblins existed in the Somerset Isles, the first Ultima civilization on Tamriel, and perhaps orcs are what they called these goblins that they treated with disdain and slavery. Hence why Topol encountered what he called orcs. It is also worth noting that according to Thronekeeper Farvad, a Redguard priest of Tuaka, goblins of the first era were also known to be taller and less cowardly than goblins of contemporary times. Then later on in history, the Ultima followers of Trinimac are cursed and changed from elven beauty to tusked green savages, elves that closely resemble goblins. I believe that it is this point that the Ultima thought them to be like the taller goblins that they called orcs. So they called the changed followers of Trinimac awesomer, meaning pariah folk, but as an insult, and perhaps at times in genuine confusion, they were called orcs, grouping them together with goblins. This could be where the age-old idea that orcs are goblin can come from. With this theory, over time, orcs would come to mean specifically the awesomer, distinguishing them from the other less intelligent and less imposing goblin can by giving them the name goblins. But remember, this is just a theory, but I think it helps explain why Topol saw what he called orcs before the birth of the awesomer, and also why there is an association between goblins and awesomer that has stood the test of time, even though awesomer were originally oldmer. But now I'll take off my tinfoil hat and get to what the presence of goblins on Tamriel must have been like. Goblins were and are still widespread throughout Tamriel. The Somerset Isles was inhabited by goblins, of which the Ultima enslaved when they arrived. Hammerfell is noted for huge populations of them prior to the arrival of the Regatta, the Warrior Wave. And remember, that is after Nedic settlement, so likely before the Needs, there were even more goblins. Cyrodiil, Hyrok, and Morrowind are also home to many clans in modern ages, so the possibility that goblin society was more widespread before elves or men is almost guaranteed in my opinion. And remember that Farvad mentioned the goblins of the first era were taller and less cowardly. Well, following this logic, the goblins of the Morethic era were probably more like those same goblins. Goblins are considered quite primitive, but there is some evidence to suggest that there was once a higher goblin culture, an example of which is a mysterious obelisk covered in runes in Fear Frost Caverns, home of a goblin clan, though then again, perhaps this is a relic of another people. Regardless, we can know for sure that a pre-elven, pre-human Tamriel definitely had goblin societies, high or primitive, widespread throughout Tamriel. There are also the white-skinned Rykir goblins of the Rothgar region and the Rykelings of Solstheim, which during the Second Era also were found in Skyrim, so one could imagine that before elves and men, these were also far more widespread as the rest of the goblins were. Another type of goblin can are ogres, which likely proliferated in these times as well. So Topol makes his way through the north, down the coast of Morrowind, and eventually arrives at Black Marsh, where he mentions the humanoid lizards, what we know as the Argonians today. The Argonians have seemingly been in Black Marsh since the dawn of time. The hist trees of Black Marsh and the Argonians are intimately intertwined in biology, society, and spirituality. And according to the annotated annuad, the hist were bystanders in the Elnafe War, but most of their realm was destroyed as the war passed over it. A small corner of it survived to become Black Marsh in Tamriel, but most of their realm was sunk beneath the sea. Some have speculated that the Hist are survivors of a previous Kalpa, a universal cycle, but regardless, the Hist are ancient, and some believe that the Argonians were originally Hellstrom ancestor lizards that licked the Hist sap, and over time, with the sap, evolved into the Argonians of today. You can look to our video on the Hist trees for more elaboration on this, but in Topol's time, the the Argonians were there, and we know a little about ancient Argonian civilization of mighty stone ziggurats called Xanmirs. Ancient Argonians had an advanced civilization, perhaps more unified than the many tribes of today, also theorized to have a larger trade network. This society were advanced in many regards, such as their skill with the creation of weaponry. 
Regardless of length, Elder Argonian blades were made from a series of volcanic glass shards set in a beaten bronze channel. The prevalence of volcanic glass in so many weapons was quite surprising, given that there isn't any known volcanic activity within Black Marsh itself. That suggests the Argonians may have regularly ventured into what we now call Morrowind. That passage also suggests that this advanced Argonian society predated elven presence in Morrowind, because the Kaimo whom would arrive later on weren't too kindly to Argonians, making this type of resource collection improbable. The advanced society collapsed in a calamity period called Duskfall. What followed was an Argonian Dark Age, if you will. Knowledge of how to create the Xanmirs and many other things were lost, resulting in the Argonian civilizations of today. But knowing all this, I think it's safe to say that the Argonians that Topol witnessed were likely the advanced Xanmir civilization of Argonians. Perhaps the Duskfall was in part attributed to the expansion of elven kind on Tamriel, cutting off the Argonians to resources traded for or collected from other lands. Black Marsh was also home to the vulpine-like fox people called the Lilmothit. They actually founded a city here called Lilmoth that still stands today. Whether or not they flourished before elves or men arrived in Tamriel, it is not known, but it is certainly possible, especially if you believe, like some, that they are related to the Khajiit. By the mid-second era, the Lilmothit had been in decline for many generations, the closest clans having withdrawn from the coastal areas inland towards the city of Blackrose. The Nahartan flu then came and what resulted was their extinction. Topol on his expedition then discovered what is now known as Topol Bay, and on the coasts of what we know as elsewhere, he encountered the Khajiit. The cat demons of four legs and two ran the river's length, always keeping the boat in their green-eyed sight, hissing and spitting and roaring with rage. Many corroborate this version of events, where Khajiit civilization on Tamriel predates that of elves and men. However, it is their own creation myth that suggests they have common ancestry with the Bosma of Valenwood and that Azura changed them into the feline humanoids of today, meaning that they were originally of Aldma stock. But that doesn't quite make sense with the presence of these cat demons that Topol saw, since Topol's expedition predated elven settlement on mainland Tamriel. Perhaps it could be that some Aldmer arrived earlier than once thought and became the Bosma and Khajiit respectively. Then the final Aldmer to leave Aldmeris came to Somerset. After all, Topol goes towards High Rock, around to Morrowind, and down to Black Marsh and into Topol Bay, then up the Nibbon River into Cyrodiil. The fragments in the Father of the Nibbon have no mention of Valenwood, nor the Bosma. Perhaps they are here at this time. It's hard to know what bits of historical and mythological evidence to give more credit to, but personally, I believe that Topol did see the ancient Khajiit, and if they truly are from elven stock, then I believe the Oldma who became the Bosma must have arrived long before we once thought, predating Topol's expedition and the settlement of Somerset. So speaking of Topol, he leaves Topol Bay traveling up the Nibbin River and eventually finds the Eight Isles of Lake Rumare, where the Imperial City would one day be built. Listen to this passage. For eleven days they traveled north, until they came to a crystalline lake and eight islands of surpassing beauty and peace. Brilliant, flightful creatures of glorious colors greeted them in Aldmeri language, making the myrrh wonder, until they understood that they were only calling back the word they were speaking without understanding it, and then the sailors laughed. Topol the pilot was enchanted with the islands and the feathered men who lived there. There the Nibbins stayed for a moon, and the birdmen learned how to speak their own words, and with taloned feet to write. In joy for their new knowledge, they made Topol their lord, giving him their islands for the gift. Topol said he would return some day, but first he must find the passage east to first hold, so far away. This describes Topol meeting these colorful bird people and teaching them how to read and write, and in return they made Topol their lord, giving him the islands. We never hear of this mysterious bird people ever again, but I doubt they were works of fiction. Presumably, Topol, or perhaps one of his descendants, or perhaps another elf, returned to the isles and claimed it for themselves. The Aelid civilization of elves that would emerge from this land incorporated many motifs of birds and feathers into their armor, costume, and architecture, which I believe was inspired by the original inhabitants of the land. Whether these bird people were driven to extinction by violence, dwindling resources, or lack of reproduction, we will never know. 
So far, we have determined through fragments of Topol's expeditionary journals that orcs, or as I believe goblins in my theory, are in Somerset, High Rock, and spread throughout Tamriel, as well as other goblin ken like ogres, as well as Rykir of Rothgar, and the Reiklings of Skyrim and Solstheim. Argonian Zanmir pre-Duskfall civilization and possibly the Lilmethit are in Black Marsh, the Khajiit are in Elsewhere, the Bird People in Cyrodiil, and depending on which evidence we are looking at, perhaps the Bosma are already in Valenwood. But as that is a hot topic of debate, and the video is after all called Before Elves and Men, I will not include them on this map of the early Marethic era. But since we're on the topic of Valenwood, let's discuss the inhabitants of this land pre-Bosma. The Imgur, the Great Apes, the native beast folk of Valenwood have been here since before the Oldma arrived. Most of what is known about them is from post-Elven and post-human Tamriel regarding their reverence and idolization of the Oldma and the most notable of their race, Maruk, who would inspire the creation of the Elysian Order. But one could assume they thrived in the forests without the Bosma taking up room. It would be fun to to speculate what their relationship with the Khajiit was. Another race that is known to live in pre-Elven Tamriel, specifically in Valenwood, are the Centaurs. Half-horse, half-man type creatures. Ancient and mysterious, the Centaurs are capable of sophisticated speech and refer to others as mortals, suggesting that they possess a greater-than-mortal situation, perhaps indicating an ageless life, death only met by physical wounds. They are also true followers of the Old Ways, the very same system of beliefs and worship that the Sijic Order practice. Considering that their forms are well suited for travel, and the fact that they are encountered in both High Rock and Hammerfell by the late Third Era, it is likely that they are widespread in the Marethic time. There is also scarce mention of satyrs in Valenwood pre Oldma, but little other lore mentions this race. Presumably, they were half goat, half man, like the satyrs of Greco Roman mythology. Now let's talk about the Giants, the largest sentient race of Tamriel. In history, they have been known to exist in lands such as Valenwood, Cyrodiil, Hammerfell, High Rock, and Skyrim. Many believe that they were the first to come from Atmora and that they are related to the Nords. In Giants, a discourse by Cord the Curious, he says, but nonetheless, we are connected to these giants, for we both share a common ancestor. The Atmorans were huge and smart. Nords descended from these ancient folk became the small, relatively speaking, intelligent people that we are today. Giants, on the other hand, became the huge, stupid creatures that we watch from a distance. Once we honored our cousins with offerings of cows, but this practice has fallen out of favor. Perhaps that is to the detriment of Nord villages everywhere. This is a possible origin and could make sense. Perhaps they truly were an earlier migration of Atmorans who grew different to those who became the races of man and the Nords. Then again, they could have also been a native race of Tamriel. We don't know for sure, but there is no evidence that rules them out of our pre-Elven, pre-human Tamriel. So I think it's likely that they were here, probably as widespread, if not more, than they are today. But there is also another group of giants called Frost Giants. They possess five eyes and have two curved horns decorating their forehead. White shaggy hair covers their bodies. They are extremely strong and have regenerative abilities that are stunted by fire. They are incredibly rare in Tamriel in recent eras. They have only been seen in the Forgotten Vale and Solstheim. Naturally, given their presence in the High Rock Skyrim border area and also Solstheim, I believe it not to be unreasonable that they once occupied territories throughout Skyrim, the distance between these two places, perhaps even beyond at times. The Somerset Isles were said to have once been inhabited by the Iliadi, giants of many eyes, taller than trees. Perhaps even further back in the Dawn era, the Iliadi were wider spread and the frost giants with their five eyes are an offshoot or perhaps a result of Iliadi interbreeding with normal giants of possible Atmoran descent. One could speculate that maybe even frost trolls and by extension normal trolls have descended or devolved from frost giants bearing similar faces and multiple eyes, three instead of five. The frost giants also share in common with the trolls the regeneration abilities. It's fun to speculate, but giants of all variety would have been present in early Marethic era Tamriel. 
There are two more races that likely possessed some form of society or civilization in the early Marathic era. The first of which is the Lamia, which are these female serpentine amphibious beast folk that are found near water all over Tamriel. They can speak Tamrielic, wield magic, are led by a queen, they wear jewelry, and even possess their own religion involving the Egg Mother and the Great Egg. And that is how they are in more recent eras. One could speculate that the presence of elves and men have forced their civilization to the fringes. Perhaps they were once more advanced or widespread, like seems to be the case with the infamous Dreg. The Dregs in contemporary time is but a crustacean mollusk type creature that inhabits the seas. They transform into land Dregs to breed and at this time they are very violent. The modern beast is found in areas such as the Abakian Sea, the Inner Sea of Morrowind and the Iliac Bay. But the interesting thing about this beast folk is found in Dunma teachings of the Tribunal Temple. They say that once they had a civilization long before the First Era, where they ruled the world as tyrants with Molag Baal as their chief. The 36 Lessons of Vivek speak of them as the Ultima of the Sea in castles of glass and coral. It gets crazier than that, as do most stories written by Vivek, but there is another corroborating story about Dreg civilization from Mankar Cameron. In the Mythic Dawn commentary, he says that tyrant Dreg kings ruled over all Mundus and the oceans of Lig until Mehrun's Dagon destroyed it. You can watch our video about the crustaceans who ruled the world linked below for a further explanation, but given there are two separate sources that corroborate the existence of a Dreg civilization, we can surmise that it existed, even if it is potentially exaggerated. So ultimately, I think the map of a pre-elven, pre-human Tamriel would look a little something like this. Various goblin clans spread over Tamriel, the Rykir and Rykelings inhabiting northern lands, tribes of centaurs spreading the breadth of western Tamriel, as well as giants wandering those same areas. The frost giants more widespread than they are today in the northern regions, the intelligent, colourful bird people that inhabit the eight isles of Lake Rumare, Valenwood is home to the Imgur, the great apes who share the land with centaurs and giants, elsewhere is home to the Khajiit, and we can only speculate the degree to which their civilization is advanced, whether it be various tribes and clans, or some form of ancient kingdom. We know for sure that the Argonians once had a civilization far more advanced than they are today, and it's likely that it was during this early Marathic period without the presence of men or elves. The Lilmethit, Volpine beast folk, could have also been here at this time, but some could argue that they would more likely migrate here without resistance during the Argonian Dark Age preceding the Duskfall. Societies of Lamia are spread all over Tamriel like they are today, at least as advanced as they currently are, and based on various stories, it would seem that the Dregs did once have a grand civilization of the oceans, and perhaps they did rule parts of Tamriel proper, such as the mainland of Morrowind near the Inner Sea and Vardenfell. Based upon the cultural stories of the Dunma conflict with the Dregs, I'd place my bets on their civilization originating from the East or Northeast Oceans. This is by no means a definitive map, and it's fairly speculative, but it should help give you a glimpse into what an early Morethic era pre-elven, pre-men Tamriel would look like. Interestingly, the only confirmed advanced civilization is that of the Argonians in Black Marsh, who were building eternal Xanmir structures, and based on their weaponry material, perhaps they had settlements throughout Morrowind, creating a large network of trade. But of course, there is no archaeological evidence for that at the moment. The other potential advanced civilizations at the time of the Khajiit, who could have been advanced or more nomadic clans and settlements, but for some reason, Topol's writings of cat demons trying to pounce at them makes me think that it is more likely the latter. But then again, he isn't going to paint the best picture of cats trying to kill him. And finally, there is the Dreg civilization, which technically may not even be on Tamriel, but the ocean near it, unless they did spread into Morrowind via the Inner Sea. All speculative, but regardless, there you go. The Argonians were the most advanced civilization prior to the arrival of men and elves. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really enjoyed researching and speculating for this video. Do let me know if I left anything out that you think should have been included, perhaps dragons, but I was going for more races of at least tribal kind of cultures. For example, I didn't talk about Spriggans because they sort of fall under the magical creature category, even though they are intelligent. You know what I mean? Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Check out our merch linked in the description. Like the video if you enjoyed. It always helps. Subscribe for more sweet Elder Scrolls content, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again soon.